Hello there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aton Risk, and today we are going to be covering something that I should have covered a very long time ago. Now, I would I wanted to actually cover this subject several years ago, but I never really got around to it, never really at the time, you know, that bullshit. But now I have the time, I have the computing power, and the I have the patience to do it. Now, I have um, been fucking around with my audio hardware, and I've switched over to different cards, so... Seems to be running pretty stable at the moment through the integrated um, audio, so fuck it. Might as well go ahead and make this video. Um, so pretty much what I want to talk about today is power supplies. Now, there has actually been a comment made on my uh, channel that was related to power supplies by a person on my um, heat testing video. Um, this guy was asking whether or not it was possible to run two 660s on a, um, two GTX 660s on a, um, 600 of power supply now I added it up and you know it you know like adding everything up it was just too much for a power supply like that so I feel I do need to go over power supplies and just make sure that people are aware of what will do what and give you an idea of what will run okay and what you could be paying for what pretty much now I want to make it clear that I'm in no way like associated with PC case gear I don't actually not doing this to promote them or anything like that. They're a business and I don't have any contract with them or anything like that. I do buy shit from them occasionally, but I'm not actually doing anything to actually promote them here. You see, it's a good layout. You've got big pictures here, so I'm going to go ahead and use this website because it's laid out in a way where I can make videos easily. Now, um, in choosing a power supply, there are a few options you have. Now, we're going to be talking about ATX power supplies. We're not actually going to be talking about power supplies of smaller form factors. I know they have some relevance to some people, but I'm not going to go over them since it would take too long to include every form factor of power supply. If people actually do want me to do that, PM me. But anyways, today we're going to just talk about what power supply works with what. Now, most cards draw somewhere around 100 watts. Most CPUs draw somewhere around 100 watts. Like for Intel CPUs, we'll just take a look. For the um, i7 um, 3700K, it draws around, well, I'm just guessing, like, from what I've seen, it's like 77 watts at maximum power. However, a lot of CPUs draw a bit more than that, so it's a bit of a, it's a bit, something to be aware of. Now, with your CPU, you do need to take that into account. It's important that you just, you know, add everything up. Now, with this, um... Like, if you were to, for example, have an i5 CPU, and if you were to be running a GTX 650, um, and if you'd be running maybe one or two hard drives and an optical drive, they, um, a 450 watt power supply should be able to run it quite comfortably without issue. Now, if you're going to go above that and run a higher performance GPU, you might want to go to f a 550. Now, if you want to go to, like, 550 watts is okay for a gaming rig. 450 watts is not really good for a gaming system, but it will still work. Now, most gaming rigs should have a power supply at the minimum of 600 watts to 1,200 watts. Now, for a gaming rig, um, the reason why you want that extra 600 watts is because you would have headroom and you wouldn't be generating as much heat from the power supply. Now, Like, if, say for example you had a um, GTX 650 Ti, you'd want to have 600 watts so you could pr provide the um, power to it and so on, and you could run your solid state drives and fans and so on. Now, having 650 watts is pretty good, especially if you are running one card or high performance card or two cards. Now, if you're going to get into dual card configurations, go with at least 800 watts because many cards draw 200 watts or more and if you add it up it's going to get to the point where it's adding up to 600 watts and it can even sometimes go above. If you're going to go for 4 cards, go for at least 1000 watts. If you're going to go for 2, go for at least 800. Pure and simple, it's just a rule you should go by. If you're going to go with a dual socket computer, or a dual socket motherboard like this for example as a rule go for 800 to 1000 um, and 600 watts or 1.6 kilowatts 
for this rig you'd want to get a power supply that is at least 800 watts because a you're gonna run two CPUs here these could be like 150 something watts each or 100 watts each adding these up it would add up to around 200 watts just right there adding a card would be another 200 watts adding up to 400 watts another card would be likely another 200 watts adding up to 800 watts so it sometimes might be a good idea to either run the cards off a different power supply or to run a 1600 watt it. If you're running a 2011 socket at least 600 as a rule or above. I do recommend going above though. But really 450 watts is more than fine for a casual computer. It will run okay. I've had no issues with a 450 watt power supply. I'm running it on the testing rig. It runs cool, it runs quiet and it works. Now if you're choosing power supplies, this one here is a bit of a cheapy, but it does work. It's fine. I don't have any issues with it. But if you are going to get a good power supply, go over silver or gold or bronze edition. But really, um, for gaming, the um, this one here, like the Corsair ones, I've got a 700 watt edition of this. But the um, GS 800s or the like, the GS series, they're perfectly fine for you know gaming. They'd run okay. That like the um, 700 watt has got a dual rail. You can run two cards on it. Pretty comfortably there's really no problem with it so if you do want to go for gaming then the GS 700 works really it's just it's important to know how much your components use you can do this by looking them up and adding it up just make sure you got at least 100 something 50 watts of headroom or possibly 200 but you don't really need it it's good to have that so that there's no fans racing at a hundred thousand rpm or something like that but Really, just make sure you get a bit of headroom to put other stuff in if you want to upgrade your computer. But, um, yeah, just be aware of how much your components are using and just don't put too much stress on your power supply because you're going to suffer from instabilities and even hardware damage in some cases if you do pick the wrong power supply. But really, you really can overdo it with a power supply. You could run a, like, I don't know, you could run a 2 kilowatt supply even though I've never heard of them. You can run a 2 kilowatt power supply and it would run almost every system in your computer without issue. But you don't really need a 1200 watt power supply for something like, I don't know, like something for like a little rig with a single graphics card. Just really know how much your computer is going to use. Think about it if you're going to upgrade it. And really just don't buy a cheap power supply because they crap out. They send high voltage to all the components and fuck everything up. So. Just be a bit careful when you're selecting a power supply, but you can't really go wrong if you get a decent one. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment below or PM me. I don't really care if you, if you have questions, just ask. But I'm going to leave this video here and let you guys think about this. And um, yeah, I hope this helped anyone out there. Please like, comment, subscribe, or even dislike if you don't feel that this video is as good as it could be. But if you are going to dislike, please leave a comment with some information and don't be rude about it. Nah, I don't know. You guys probably wouldn't follow that anyway, but nah. Have fun and um, happy building.